Real quick before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that I've got a couple of seats left in my Clarksville class, so if you'd like to come, check the first link in the description. Let's get into the video. Well, today is going to be a little bit different. I've got some titanium white here, a little bit of clear gel, and some red. It's a good place to start. I think I'm just going to start there and let's see what happens. Mostly white though, I don't want hot, bright pink, just soft. And right here in the middle, I've got, of course, my canvas is already primed. I'm going vertical today. And somewhere up here, I've got a little bit of a light spot. There we go. So what I did here was I coated the canvas with um, um, yellow ochre paint. And then I thought, you know, it's not going to work out. So let me mush. I ended up mushing a little bit of blue gray into it. The blue gray is oil and it is wet, but there's very, very, very little of it. So I don't think it's, it's affecting the painting much. That was just kind of one of those last minute decisions. It, the color that you prime with is, is important. I think it's probably yellow ochre is good sometimes. I don't think it was good for this painting. So I quickly stopped. Well, I need to take a minute and thank my Patreon members. If you're not a member on Patreon, check the link in the description and at least, you know, try it for a month and see if you like it. Oh, look at this. We're going to do a swamp scene today. And um, this is actually a painting idea, inspiration from Sean Mullins. And I'll link his stuff if I remember in the description there, because I think you'd be interested. He does art classes and posts videos. There you go. But yeah, he said, hey, I want to see you do your version of this. And he sent me some inspiration photos and some paintings that he's done. So it's going to be a swamp. And I think it'll be interesting. Now, rather than stopping right here, I'm going to actually just take some. I'm going to take some of these same colors and, you know, because we might want to go do something else. But before I do that, let me begin to work on this water. And I'm just going to bring some of the colors already into this. Isn't that pretty? But you see how I can use this tone to really make the water just feel, I don't know, like incorporated with the painting. Everything fits. So now I'm just adding in some of these black and green tones, some of these shadow tones, just to create a look and feel of, oh, there's a little forest around the water. Of course, there, hasn't, there isn't any forest yet, but we'll put some in. So I'm just playing with color here, and I'm going to add in some more of these blues and purples, just mixing it up. And just anywhere I think there might be a pocket of dark, I'm going to place that in. It's a little hard to tell at this point. I may not want to do too much, but I really feel like I need some of this water in before I put trees in. It just, it's already starting to look like something could be back there. You know what I mean? Of course, we can go darker. I'm planning to go darker. I'm just not, I'm not there yet. Now, I've placed on some of these darker, shadowy tones here and working them in with just a just a little flat brush I really should let me clean that brush off real good by cleaning it I just mean wiping it and I'm going to come up here and honestly let me take a little bit more of my white and honestly I'm going to get some more of these lighter ripples on the water see anytime if this you don't like this you know, anytime during this process you're not happy what you can do is you can just wipe the canvas off in that area and just do it again. The colors will just smoosh into the background. You can paint right over them. I think that'll be great. You know what? It'll work. So I'm just painting some of these whiter colored ripples on top now. Okay. Actually, they shouldn't be pure white. Of course, they're not. They're mixing. But I'm going to tint them with just a little bit of pink to pull some of that pink from the sky. I think that'll be pretty. Oh, yeah. Okay, just ripples, fine little ripples and details. Back here, less and less and less. And then toward the foreground, of course, I want more. And this is just little by little. We're working in detail to this water. It's a lot to it, but that's okay. It's a process. If it was just super quick and easy, well, it might not be as rewarding as something that you got to work at. Sometimes there's no shortcuts when it comes to painting. Sometimes there are, but sometimes there's not. With something like this, if there is one, I don't know it. <laughs> if you know a, short, a shortcut to this, let me know in the comments and I will take a look. There we go. Now let me take a little bit of our, there's some yellow ochre. I'll have the one inch brush here. 
some sap green, uh, some red, a little bit of red just laying there. I'm not totally sure what color I'm after yet. Some sort of a grayish, bluish color with green. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Multiple colors. And you know what? That's not quite. I want to go a little bit softer, a little bit more red and a little bit more blue and some white. Okay, let's try that. I enjoy having a gray palette. I've always liked a gray palette. All right, let's go right up here because it helps me to see my colors, honestly. So I'm just going to tap this color in. This is not everything. This is just step one. And we're going to do many multiple steps, including blotting this with a shop towel. So don't worry if it doesn't look perfect because it won't. <laughs> there we go. Fix some yellow. See, I can sprinkle my yellows and my greens in through here, but I definitely want it to remain a bit on the cooler side in the shadows. At least, you know, in the shadows for sure. In the shadows for sure. I want it cooler. There we go. Yeah. I'm leaving some sky holes because I think that'll help us in the future have those little sky holes. And I'm going to fill the whole thing in. And I've got a sliver of, of sunlight right about here. And I've got some larger trees. Before I do the larger trees, I'm just going to scrub some of this color in the background. Well, now I've got a shop towel crumpled up. And I'm going to start here, just right about here. And I'm just going to blot this like I normally would because that does two things. It creates an, a really a nice effect, a nice texture of leaves and what this will end up being moss and different things hanging from the trees. I think that'll be so interesting. And of course, the other most important thing it does is it removes the paint so that I can paint other layers on top of this without creating mud slick which I'm not interested in. You can only get so far with one shop tub. Get another one. There we go. Yeah, this will be fine. This is nothing more than a backdrop. I don't want to overdo this. Just a few more minutes on this because it is just not a big deal. I've got large trees in front of this. I'm going to probably have to stop and wash my hands after this though. There we go. Yeah, so I'm closing up that just, I just want a little bit. And I'll have that big old limbs and stuff coming over on top of this. I think it'll be interesting. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this moss that's hanging from the limbs of these trees far away. I want this fairly blurry. And this will just, just add another dimension of life back here, you know. There's my color. Just a little bit of uh, kind of a purpley tone. Like so. I did have a, I did have a um, kind of a brownish, but I think I'm going to change it to more of a purpley. I'll leave the brown intact, and that way I'll have multiple colors. How cool is that? Free. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Back up in here. I'm going to do some more of this. Oh, some of that brown is still sneaking in. That's okay. Yep, I'm just going to keep working little by little just to build this background up. I've, I've got a big tree here. Lots of tree action over here. Don't want to waste a lot of time. But in the center, I mean, I do have some hanging limbs there. So some moss, lots of moss. So I don't want to waste, you know, I don't want to waste any area. If I'm going to paint over it, I don't want to do it, in other words. There we go. And I kind of take some of this and incorporate these as some shadow tones as well, just to create something different. You know, this palette is definitely an interesting setup, but I think it's going to work. So it'll be fun to try it today. And I may make tweaks and changes, but it's always fun to try something new. Yeah, that's working. Look at that. It's amazing what you can do with just a few brush strokes. It's a very different painting for me. Different subject, thanks to Sean. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, it's his fault, right? There we go. I like that a lot. That'll work. Now I'm going to take some black and some brown together here and create just a nice dark color. Maybe I'll put some red and blue in it as well. Just a dark color. Doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a large tree up here, starting just not quite to the edge of the canvas and I'll bring it right down. You see why I was so careful. You know, I didn't want to paint in, cover up a bunch of what I had already done. And there's a, virtually no paint down here, which is good. It makes it nice and dark. There we go. There's more paint up here. So I have to load it on thicker if I want it to be seen. Make sure that's nice and dark. There we go. So yeah, it just takes a, a couple minutes to put these, these little trees in. Now this one I might extend out. I can always make it bigger later. It's easy to make it bigger. 
And it's a lot more work to make it smaller, so I don't want to do that. Now I've got that tree trunk there. Of course, it doesn't mean anything. I can cover it. I'm going to go right over it. I'm going down here with that tree. This is the next cypress tree. Looking good. And again, I'm going to detail these out more, but over here is basically hardly anything. So I just get some nice, thick, dark color down. And that should work. Nice, fairly straight trees. And one more big one. Big one off to the side where it's coming down. Sean specifically said he wanted me to do it <laughs> to where it looks like you're coming through the trees on your boat. So that's what I'm doing. Nice and thick. Now, as you can see, I've got several colors here on the palette, ranging from kind of this lighter tan all the way to the dark. So let's start with the dark, just mostly burnt umber, a little bit of red. And um, let's go ahead and just begin to place in some of these mossy tree limbs, the, the leaves. I don't know. How do these trees live with all this moss on top? You know, you go to Florida and uh, places like that, not just in Florida, but you see these. I mean, I remember, I've seen this is Spanish moss, I believe. I don't know if there's any other kind, but this is what I've always heard it called. I mean, I've been driving down the road in Florida and I've had my car hit by a piece of moss that was dangling because it was, it, was, it was over, there's a tree growing over the road and it was dangling down so low that it was, you know, hitting the taller cars and vehicles. Isn't that crazy? But I want to know how does the tree, how do the trees live with all this moss hanging off of them? Doesn't it choke the light? I don't know. It's an interesting thought, huh? But I guess everything seems to be pretty happy because the trees are there and the moss is there, right? So we're just going to create a bunch of this dangly Spanish moss. I think maybe every once in a while you could give it a little, just a little pull. You know, so some of it has a bit of a different texture. That could be good. But the stuff that's close up, I do want it to feel fairly texturized. You know what I mean? Now, I've got this little canopy of light here, and I don't really want to mess it up. I'm going to go, whoa, 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 I'm going right through it. There we go. Isn't that great? There we go. Okay, so I'm just playing. Just playing. And this covers a lot of the background. Again, this is why I didn't put too much time in the background. Actually, this has been a pretty simple, I'll be honest, pretty simple painting. Pretty simple. I haven't put as much time into it as I usually do, I don't think. I'll have to go back and look at the recording for Patreon. I've got this recording as a full-length lesson as well. So if you're interested in every last brush stroke that it took to create this painting, you can check it out. It'll be on Patreon. Maybe not as soon as the video goes live, but a couple days later at the latest. But yeah, go check out Patreon if you're interested. Isn't that cool? I try to do about one full length lesson over on Patreon per month. And when you sign up for Patreon, you've got access to all my backlogs. So you have instant access to all kinds of good lessons. You'll be, believe me, there's more than you can do. If you sign up for a month, you've got about six months worth of projects there. So it's going to take you a long time to get through them. But that's good. It's good. To, it's a great way to learn. Now this area is mainly, almost really completely covered by this foliage. Now I've got a cup of, uh, this happens to be walnut oil, but you could use linseed oil. I'm not sure how this is going to work. My palette's on an angle, so we'll see how sloppy this gets. Well, for starters, I really don't need anything too wet anyways, because I'm going to highlight my tree trunks. I don't know if you could tell, but I put quite a bit of paint down and I don't know. I feel like just highlighting with the liner brush is going to be safer than highlighting with a the detail round. That's just my opinion for this. So I'm going to make that paint fairly creamy. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and just lay in some of this beautiful bark texture. It's just like you would imagine for a an old swamp. Just a lot of these little ribs on the trees as they go up. There we go. I'm trying to play around with the lighting a little bit too. I don't want to just want flat dead lighting, but I want there to be some interest in the light, the way that the light is hitting the tree trunks. So I'm going to separate that one right there. And then of course it needs to get darker. So I'll select a, a different color here on the palette. And this isn't bad. It's not running too much. No worse than holding it. 
There we go. And just work that down. Lots of, again, lots of these little ribs and stuff. Just put them on. Because this paint is thin, you can actually just take a, any kind of just a clean, dry filbert brush or something and just touch this and it'll like just disappear into the painting if you need to. I'm going to go even darker. I've got kind of a dark purple left over over here. <laughs> over, over. And let's just drop in, you know, some of this beautiful, beautiful texture to the bark. I'm having fun with this. This is an interesting little subject and a, a, so much different from what I would normally paint. Well, you know what? Actually, it's not all that different at all, is it? just feels different, but it's really not. It's very similar to what I would actually paint now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, that's funny, right? I mean, it's trees and water and leaves and reflection. Very similar. This isn't different at all. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But what what is slightly, slightly different is just kind of the, the techniques here. Especially with that water. It's a little different than I normally paint water. Let me hit this side with highlight just a little. Boom, just an accent highlight. Now really the last thing I'm going to do up here is to pop a couple of negative spaces in. I can do this. There's very, very little paint in that background, if you remember. Almost nothing. And so it's fairly easy. And I'm just going to thin this with a little bit of walnut oil. You can see I put a paper towel across there because my oil was leaking, but that seemed to be okay. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm going to get better and better at this. You know, when you've done something for a certain way, 15, uh, 12 years, I don't know, a long time to say, I'm just going to do it different. It's hard <laughs> sometimes. There we go. But I'm just popping a couple of little negative spaces in. This is really a fun thing that I like to do when I paint forests. I don't always do it, but every time I do it, I, I think well, I should do this more. You know what I mean? I like these little negative areas. Roger Bansomer is the one I learned how to do this from. He does this. He paints his skies after his trees, which is really weird, but it totally works. I don't do it. I don't go to that extent, but I do enjoy the uh, popping in a couple of these, punching the negative holes back in because it just opens up that canopy and brings a little light through that wouldn't otherwise come through. I just think that's pretty, very pretty today. And the light, this is just a soft, misty, gentle, the light's kind of coming through like this. Sean wanted the light coming specifically and <laughs> from that side. So that's more or less, this is not, not supposed to be the light source. The light source is kind of coming through here. You can tell that by the bushes and whatnot, but you do whatever you want. If you want your light coming through the middle, you, you make that change when you do yours. Well, this is something I almost never do, but I'm back here after several days. It's been, I don't know, several days. And this painting, as you can see, is, well, hopefully those trees, yeah, even the liner brush stuff is bone dry. Look, my oil painting is dry. I just want to make sure you guys know that. Um, it's good and dry. Now, over here on my palette, you'll see that I've just got a little bit of clear gel and titanium white. Now, I'm going to show you how to mix transparent white. So I'm going to take my clear gel and a little bit of this titanium white, maybe, maybe about half, about 50-50, I guess. I don't know. You could do this with walnut oil, with anything. Or you can buy transparent white. I'm just showing you how to mix it in case, because you probably don't have any on hand. But if you do a lot of this, it'd be worth just buying gambling transparent white, because it is good. I've used it before. Anyway, right up here, I'm going to just place in a few sun rays. I just got to thinking, you know what, this painting just feels a little bit not quite punchy enough not quite punchy enough so i'm going to go ahead and bring in some some sun rays just like this you can see i'm just bringing that through little little bits of paint very light pressure again this oil painting is dry it's just like an acrylic painting no different and what's important about this is that I just create a little bit more of that look. You could, you could make it a backlit painting, but no, the light's got to come through like this, kind of through some of these trees. And I think it'll be so pretty maybe from behind. Oh, there we go. But then in front, oh, that'll be nice. So I'm just going to play around. This may take me, oh, probably about 10 minutes. I'll just play around here 
until I get the, uh, the look that I'm after. So you're just very subtle. You can always add more. Of course, you know what? You can always take a baby wipe or something and, and clean off the canvas. Well, that wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. This was certainly a little bit different, but I enjoyed the subject. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, Brushline, and Patreon. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos, and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.